Muy buenas, ¿qué pasa? Aquí tenéis la etapa 20 del Tour de Francia 2015. En este momento Chris Froome vestía el liderato última etapa, subida a Alpe d'Huez. Nairo Quintana a 2.42 ya lo había probado justo antes a 11 kilómetros de meta y os voy a dejar prácticamente la subida íntegra para que veáis lo emocionante que fue esta etapa y el gran ataque que hizo Nairo Quintana y que destrozó al Sky a Chris Froome. Espero que disfrutéis de esta mítica subida a Alpe d'Huez y si queréis más vídeos con este tipo de contenido de los mejores momentos del ciclismo no olvides darle al like al vídeo y también puedes suscribirte y dejar un comentario. Sígueme también en redes sociales, ahí lo tenéis, Dani Pro Cycling en el primer comentario y en la descripción del vídeo y también si os metéis en ese foro que aparece ahí en el pico, Race Forum, es un foro para hablar de muchos temas de ciclismo así que si os queréis meter allí y hablar un poquito pues allí os estaré esperando. Muchas gracias y espero que disfrutéis con el vídeo. Who is going to be the next one to attack? Contador here, of course, also we see uh, Maika also on, t on tour here from Tinkoff Saxo. Uh, you have Geniers up front, 30 seconds behind. You have Pino and Eschidal behind them. Five pursuers, Anacona, Roland, Plaza Molina, Serpa and Ede. Uh, there's not really much zone of respite within this climb. It's a punishing one all the way up, Sean. It's a question of inclines and they deal with some severe ones throughout this run. Yes, well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a steep gradient all the way. It does kick up a bit more, but on the on the easier gradient, if somebody go in the attack, well, then it's just as different. Yeah. They're going to get maybe caught up in the end. Ejidal comes alongside and uh, Pino says, well, I've got a man up the road. Why on earth am I going to chase here? Francis is your one and two at the moment. If uh, you can Ejidal as number three. He might be number one at the end of the day in terms of the stage, but who is going to win this Tour de France? It looks like Chris Froome at the moment. All questions that have been asked by Nero Quintana have been answered so far, Sean. Yes, well, I think uh, very much so, and uh, it's not Chris Froome have to do with his teammates who are doing all the work at the, at the, for the moment, and, uh, you know, that is a great position to be in. If you can just uh, sit on your teammates and allow them to pull back a rider like Nero Quintana, who is, you know, such a good climber, It's uh, a real comfort zone for Froome for the moment. Nibali, what a day um, and what a contrast, to be honest, to the day he had yesterday. A real piece of bad luck and in fact uh, he is distanced, he's about 40 seconds down on this group because they've had some real pace, they've been attacking each other and that's been to the detriment of Nibali, I'm afraid, further down the mountain shot. Yes, and uh, of course we did see Nero Quintana attacking very quickly on the earlier slopes of it. I think a little bit of a tactic there as well because Van Velde, we know he has one minute 19 on uh, Nibali, so it gave him an opportunity. He was attacking through, but it also helps to pull away Van Velde and give Nibali a more difficult ride if he does get back into this group. Uh, no doubt who's going to get the combativity award today. It has to be this man. Genius has been up there for much of the day. He was part of an early breakaway. He's gone for it. Uh, going for it as well is Thibaut Pinot, his teammate, and spinning up a storm. He's had a conversation with Eshida and said, look, I'm not going to chase on because I'm not going to try and close the gap on my teammate up the road. It seems obvious all riders know that and it doesn't stop Eshida asking the question for a little bit of help on this climb. And Eshidal goes for it, he decides I've had enough and he leaves Pino behind and meanwhile Valverde it now is that goes for this. Uh, Valverde almost certain of third place on this Tour de France because of what's happened to Nibali at the bottom, got himself a rear puncture. So uh, Valverde knows it'll be positions two and three but this is part of a bid for glory of course, not for himself but for the man who wears the white jersey. There he is, Nero Quintana uh, trying to do the old one-two and right now Valverde just trying to tempt Sky into action. Yes, and uh, this is going to be the interesting one again. They will uh, allow Valverde just to ride out in front here, and uh, then we will see Quintana you know, doing the same as we did see on the uh, previous climb, the Quad Affair, where he uh, just uh, goes across to Valverde and uh, try and work it that way. But uh, we can see there with Sky, very, very solid. World Pools, Richie Port, looking you know, extremely strong for the moment. Nibali just using the uh, the motorcycle just dips in behind. He's just about to get back onto the Bardet group. Bardet, of course, wearing the polka dot jersey. Um, hoped for so much today and, and maybe a possibility of uh, carrying the polka dots or indeed wearing that and being awarded it in, uh, in, in Paris. Chris Froome, incidentally, leads the uh, King of the Mountains competition. Right now, out of all the favourites, this man is up the road. It's Valverde you're looking at. Genius. He happens to be the teammate of the man alongside him, Thibaut Pinot. 
and uh, the Frenchman aren't going to attack. Um, uh, Pino is not going to attack Genies up the road. It's going to be down to Ejidal to have to do that duty. Likewise, um, other duties. Nibali, it's one of retrieval. Uh, what for Chris Froome, it's preservation, and for Nero Quintana, it is one of attack, and there he goes, he's gone again, he's got Valverde up the road, and just look at the response from Team Sky, Val Poles has a look behind, sees who else is with him, just checks up the inside, it's Richie Port closest to him, and of course, Chris Froome is there as well. Contador has, uh, uh, has come back from what looked like it was going to be a bit of a drift today, and he's very much involved as well, uh, we remind you that Contador started today in fifth place, it looks like a solid fifth right now because of the way this is panning out. Quintana has been wound back in again. He'll kick again, will he? He tries to find another rhythm and goes for it again. This is brave effort by Quintana, but at the end of what has been an extraordinarily punishing Tour de France, I'm just wondering if he's got anything left to give on this climb, the ultimate. Well, he has, he's having difficulty just to make a gap uh, from the teammates of Chris Froome, and uh, that is always difficult when you see World Pools just riding away there and pulling back, and we can see you know, Valverde continuing up here in front, but uh, Alberto Contador getting into difficulty, but Quintana, again, he just throws in another punch. He throws in another punch, he sails around this left-hander and just uh, momentarily uh, goes out of view of the chasers from Sky. Well, Pals first to take a look up and see what the gap is, and right now it's about 8, 10, 12 bike lengths. That's a good kick, very good kick. Oh, and suddenly another kick as well. It's Timo Pierrot kicking sand in right at Ejidal's face. He's gone up the road. Ejidal starts to fade. It's Genies and uh, Timo Pierrot as well. Could it be a glorious day for France at the very last year? Minute and 46 back to Valverde, by the way, from the man up the road. That's Genies who uh, leads the day's stage. But it's the gap between Quintana and Froome that's the one of most concern. Nobody said this was an easy task, but they've taken it on gleefully today, and Francis Ejeu might well have their fun, John. Well, I think uh, they have to you know, push on here, and Pino knows that uh, he has to get out of this group or push on as much as possible. Heisdahl was walking away at it, and that's the way Ryder Heisdahl climb. You know, he's steady, just a really strong pace. Pino just puts in a big punch here, gets up to Ginez, and he's pushing on now, trying to pull him away, but they need to do that because the race is coming up from behind. It's all very well sending Valverde up the road, but when you get there, he can offer you no more assistance, and it's Quintana that's gone to the front. Same thing happened on the Quella Fair. Same thing's happening on Altuez. We're not quite up to Dutch corner just yet. In fact, we've got some time to go. 8.6 kilometers left of today. Quintana then, there he is. He checks back over his shoulder and he sees what he doesn't want to see. And it's a yellow jersey, Sean, not that far away. Well, I think uh, he sees that Chris Froome is in a bit of difficulty because uh, he hasn't wrecked it at all, Froome, but of course he had two teammates who were controlling the situation. Will they be able to just keep on walking away at it and pull back Nero Quintana once more? But I think Chris Froome is a little bit in difficulty otherwise he might try and you know react himself when Quintana goes if he was as he's been in the past in this race immediately reacting and in the wheel of Quintana immediately. It's Francis Ejeu one and two on the road today in this stage and uh, Ryder Ejidal has just kept his rhythm and got back to these guys here is Quintana and Valverde they are second and third of the order that they are on the road at the moment uh, second and third amongst the, the big names I should say Overall, we remind you, Quintana started the day 2 minutes and 38 down. What's the gap, Sean? And let's not forget uh, Valverde, Quintana has an, a teammate up the road, uh, winner and corner. He was in this group, so they will be coming to him pretty quickly, and that will be very important. If winner and corner is in good shape, well, then he can push on. Serpe here as well. We have seen uh, the Colombian rider uh, on the earlier part, on the quad affair. He did push on as well with... Uh, um, uh, with the white jersey, and uh, he's doing it once again here. Just counting now back between Quintana and uh, Froome. And in fact, it's a goodly margin. It's starting to eke out. Uh, by my reckoning, it's about 20 seconds at the moment. So work to be done by Team Sky. What resources have they got to bring right now to this battle? And what has Chris Froome got when he is ultimately isolated and on his own later on? We can only wait and see. 
So Colombians helping each other, sort of uh, cross-team national assistance, I think it's possibly fair to say. Uh, but you'd have to prove that in court, I think. And would anyone begrudge Quintana a little bit of help by a fellow Colombian? We'll see. Uh, it's all part of the race today, that is for sure. And there, oh, poor Genies goes backwards. What a great ride by him today. I think he'll be wearing the red combativity number tomorrow. Uh, we'll find out who is going to win the ultimate prize. Quite often they declare that at the top of the final day to the Champs-Élysées. We will see. There is Valverde. It's down to Quintana. The camera swings round and we see the white jersey. And indeed, he's with his other teammate who was from the breakaway. Great work. This is winner Anacona. And uh, still looks like he's offering something because Quintana hasn't gone by him yet. Still waiting for that official declaration of the gap between Quintana and Froome. Transponder's not functioning properly up the mountains here. We thought it was about 20 seconds. Has it expanded though, Sean? Well, it is expanding. We can see that. And uh, with 7.7 .7 to go, it's a long, long ways to the top of this one. So, uh, yes, Sky have the job to do to keep on setting a pace that is good enough to limit uh, the time gained by Nero Quintana. Quintana, but again, you have to remember how good is Chris Froome is. He's starting to suffer a bit, so you have to make that calculation as well. We can see there that Chris Froome is losing a little bit on his teammates. I think Chris Froome is starting to suffer, and this is early on the climb to be suffering. It is very early on the climb to be suffering, and 7.6 kilometres to go. It doesn't sound like an awful lot, but the worst part of this climb is still to come. And in fact, uh, the worst section, uh, the midsection, I should say, this, one of the steeper sections, these guys are just sailing over right now. Sailing, clawing their way up this mountain, that's for sure. But look at the way Quintana is eating in. That's Roland ahead of him, and I suspect they may well just sail by these guys. Roland will do his best, I think, to tag onto them. Takes a big... Uh, uh, swig of water what's he got to offer let's see is he absolutely burnt out we're going to find out right now and it's a suggestion almost of what anyone else has got left because Roland is a decent climber indeed not as good as Quintana clearly and Quintana out of the saddle and still he tries to issue yet more blows to Froome who's further back down the mountain here he is with two teammates with him is it enough Aginal decides to push on for glory today, and I think he may well be in for a stage win. He's a very capable rider in situations such as this. Then again, it might well be Quintana. And don't forget, bonus seconds up for grabs at the line. That could be crucial, Sean, in, in the scheme of things as well. Yes, well, it looks like the winner is going to come from maybe Quintana. I think he's the one who is eating into the advantage here of our men out in front, Heijdal and Thibaut Minot. Uh, 20 seconds I was hearing there just some moments ago over race radio for Chris Froome down on Nero Quintana. 20 seconds, 2 minutes and 39 is what Quintana needs to win this Tour de France. So it's a massive ask, it's a massive crowd, it's a massive moment on this Tour de France. And, well, Quintana is giving it a good go. Is it all too late? We're going to find out. Sky damage limitation for them at the moment yes it is all about damage limitation and uh, they're doing it quite well working away at the two riders uh, World Pools and Richie Port working well together we can see here the group of Nibali um, Bolka Malema and Adam Yates who is doing a real good performance because he is up in some serious company here 26 or so seconds now between Quintana and uh, and the yellow jersey of Chris Froome. He's got to find more time. He needs two more minutes on this mountain. He's got 6.9 kilometres to do it. Yes, well, I think it's going to be always difficult, even going at the very earlier uh, point on Alto Ways making the uh, the calculation the time you have to make up it would be always difficult but again we have to wait and see how uh, sky managed the situation here chris Froome, you know he's walking away at it it's looking that it's going to be difficult but again there's almost seven kilometers to, a little under seven kilometers to go well, the vehicles that you see parked up here have been here for an entire week. Uh, that was the cutoff point to allow vehicles up the mountain. These guys, they've been climbing all, all over France, climbing, sprinting, time trialing, and finally we come to Alpe d'Huez. What an amazing crucible in a certain way for these guys to be put within. Absolutely white hot the action, despite the fact that the pace is slow because of the incline we're dealing with, and in fact, uh, more than 10%, uh, 10, 10 and 12s along the way. And it's been too much for some, certainly too much for Bardet, and I'm afraid it's bye bye polka dots for him. Yes, I think it's, uh, and for the man just in front of me, uh, the Katusha rider, uh, Purito Rodriguez, also in. Uh, 
in the uh, mountain classification but unfortunately today uh, the way the race has been going uh, it looks like that uh, Chris Froome is the one because he is going to finish up if he keeps on going in the position he's in well then he's going to take more points in that uh, mountain classification and of course the other two men who are challenging him are further down the mountain well there you are a diminutive character is Quintana but he's a big powerhouse and a, a leprechaunic uh, fan as well to the side of the road uh, just bouncing along and offering up uh, a heartfelt encouragement and here comes Ejidal and they're coming into Dutch corner you can see the orange there's not many mountains in Holland but they own one here in France it seems and they are underway they've been waiting for this all week and the first man that they see is right Ejidal yes although we can see uh, that's you know out front uh, it's Thibaut Pernou is just a little bit up ahead of Ejidal here so it's a big battle here with the two leaders on the road but uh, I think they're very concerned with what's happening behind. They are being made aware that the uh, group coming up behind Quintana is coming up very quickly, as we can see here. He's coming across to Ginez. He is. Uh, Ginez is about to catch. Uh, it, uh, unfortunately, so, sorry for that. Uh, Pino masked by a, a naked outrunner. Here he is. He's out front. And it is, in fact, that uh, it's Eshadal that's been left in his wake. Uh, likewise, Froome from Quintana. But it's a question of margin. Here we go through the absolute uh, madness of Dutch Corner right now. They have been here all week. They are tacked up and ready to give vent and applause to everybody who's coming up here. But the tanks of the riders are empty, Sean. And what about what about Team Sky? And what about Froome? These are questions we're going to answer in the next 6K. Yes, and uh, it's important that Chris Froome have two teammates just to lead him through here. As we can see, they're working very well together all the time. Losing uh, a little bit slowly, but it's not growing out of anything uh, of uh, an emergency at the moment. But uh, we're still just under seven kilometers to go seven kilometers to go they come through this uh, uh, amazing party a great festival of cycling appreciation i think it's fair to say and uh, thank goodness that they've kept themselves sensible i think a lot of warnings have gone out uh, the police have been down here as well and said look respect them and they're giving them space here sure yes well for the moment they're giving them space but we can see here just a, uh, a spectator running along this is where dangerous because with uh, valverde so close to that spectator if he you know gets gets pushed over he could to go down in front of him and that would be a disaster for uh, Valverde but again we can see here that uh, the Sky men leading up at the moment and uh it's a big battle out front between the two leaders. We see Thibaut Pinot here, the Frenchman from Francaise de Joux, and also Ryder Heijdal from Canada del Garmin, which is just a little bit further down here. My goodness, uh, it's just the rhythmic movement that pick out, of course, the riders from the crowd. There's virtually no distance. At elite sport level, you can get no closer to your heroes, so respect them, I think, is the order of the day. Yes, well, that's what you would be hoping, but again, you know, People are waiting here. Uh, they see their you know, big heroes coming through, and uh, it's uh, sometimes difficult to get just over anxious, and that's when we can see uh, sometimes problems. For the moment, all going well, and we are getting closer to the barrier off section, and when we get to that, I think the riders will be relieved that a bit more safe to get through. Well, you can't barrier the whole uh, uh, mountain, and you wouldn't want to. Alp Duez has its own charm, its old drama. Uh, they say it's the nearest thing you get to stadium cycling, <laughs> Out in the Alps and you can understand the atmosphere is absolutely electric right now uh, Chris Froome needs some kind of extra power he's got to find it because up the mountain is Quintana and look at the margin Sean yes well it is growing out as we can see here Quintana at 58 seconds and uh Chris Room at 128 at the moment and we can see here that you know everybody is just walking at it and you know giving it their 100% and uh, certainly the Sky are doing that and they're doing a great job uh, the two men for uh, Chris Room are you know excellent uh, if they can keep on working as they have been for the last number of kilometers well that will be the saving of Chris Room and, and uh, the yellow jersey should be secure but again we have to see Quintana where he is and he's going to you know continue on how fast can he go that is the question five kilometers to go it's going to be another stage victory by the looks of things unless Quintana can get back at Thibaut Pinot he's a minute down with five kilometers to go I'm wondering whether that's enough because Quintana has got no choice other than to really push on and he's doing it Sean yes well it's uh, winner and corner who's doing all the pushing he's doing a, uh, an unbelievable performance up front as well with uh, Quintana because he's been on the front there with Quintana on tour again how long will he uh, last out there and I think 
think that minute for Thibaut out front is going to be very, very difficult because when Quintana has to take it up on his own, he will eat into that minute advantage very quickly. Chris Froome is there. Uh, you saw that Pierre Roland is also there. Uh, the gap between Froome and Quintana at the moment is about 30, 32 seconds uh, in that sort of order. Uh, it's infrequent, the time gap that we're getting. Uh, but it's holding at least just beyond the 30-second mark. And don't forget the gap at the top of the day between Froome and Quintana is 2 minutes and 38. Is that too much of an ask? I believe it is. I think Chris Froome will be crowned champion at the end of today. But nothing can be certain until we get these 4.6 kilometres out of the way. And a little bit more, of course, for those further down the mountain. You're looking at Chris Froome right now. He's still got teammate, a teammate with him. Uh, there as well, Quintana strikes out, he's burnt all his personnel and now he's going to scorch up this mountain. Yes, and he's scorching up there, we can see, you know, the Colombian supporters, he just goes in the attack, he knows that winner and corner is starting to slow, starting to tire and uh, he has to just, you know, go from a long ways out, he's already, you know, taking it up very early, but, uh, you know, this is where he can make up time and we can see here, impressive the way he's going uphill. Absolutely fantastic climber in action. Uh, a man who started off for many as a favourite for this Tour de France. It looks like it's going to be second place, but nothing is decided yet. Chris Froome wrestling with all his emotions. He's had to deal with an awful lot. He's carried a lot on his shoulders, and not just that jersey, let's not forget. Almost a burden of success. Uh, it's not been liked. It's not been appreciated in certain quarters. Uh, many, though, do. And right now, Froome is into the last few curves of Alp Duez. 4.2 kilometres uh, remain of today for the man up the road. That's Thibaut Pinot. Uh, Pinot is up there. Ejidal is there. And Quintana's 48 seconds back. Quintana is greedy. For bonus seconds as well, Sean, if he can find those 48 seconds to Pinot, and I suspect that's the easiest task he's going to have today uh, of the many, then he gets a 10-second bonus at the line as well, which could prove crucial. Yes, well, it's, it's the second bonus will, every second will be crucial here, and we can see here, you know, he's just giving it everything, still over four kilometres to go, and it's a four kilometre that just goes on forever. On the Alp, you know, when you have uh, four kilometres, the kilometres come down so slowly, it's just unbelievable, and we can see Quintana, also starting to look like he's suffering here not surprising the way they have been tackling this climb up to Alto Ace and uh, now it's a question of if Chris Froome can keep on working he's lost World Pools of course and is Richie Port the Australian rider who is securing a real strong pace at the moment looking good but they have to continue on for another four kilometers Timo Pino still grinds he's into the barrier section right now and 3.9 kilometers from home he's almost into the easier area right now and he's looking at the camera he wants to know what the gap is I think his radio has been pulled out of his ear he didn't want anyone shouting at him it is indeed the earpiece is dangling down by his chin what the gap he says how much chance have I got of taking a stage victory and saving this race for myself essentially well Quintana's on his case but uh, how far back is he 44 seconds he hasn't found uh, Ejidal just yet 40 seconds now declared back to Pinot and the gap between Quintana and Froome is heading for the minute mark Sean Yes, well, it is uh, growing out slowly and it's going to continue on uh, all the way to the finish line. But will uh, it be enough? It's not looking like that it's going to be. But again, you know, in four kilometers, they can so much happen. Quintana can just start to weak uh, or he can you know, maybe just continue at this pace if he does. And Chris Froome continues on to the same pace. Well, then I don't think he will take over the leadership of this Tour de France. But again, Chris Froome, will he be able to continue on with the pace Richie Porte has set? We can see here, you know, he's still following they are looking about and when you can look about you're, you're not suffering too much but again we'll have to wait and see well, uh, Chris Froome still being abused uh, by certain sections of the crowd, but uh, he needs to just put that behind him. He did uh, spare himself a, a glance at somebody who'd issued more than just words in his direction, I'm afraid. He's been a brave man, Sean, Chris Froome. Uh, this is a brave performance as well as a gutsy performance and a powerful one by Froome, let's not forget. Uh, and he's still struggling with his own emotions within his own mind. And I'm not surprised. He's carried quite a weight, hasn't he, throughout this tour? Yes, well, he's uh, had a difficult tour and, uh, of course, it does go on. You will always get these people, you know, and uh, we did see there on the roadside there was something said to him. He looked over his left shoulder, but you have to continue on. You have to focus out in front and just concentrate on the racing is uh, alone. It, it's difficult to do, but you have to just try, you know, 100% on what's happening up front. Just use your anger.
Right now, there's a minute between himself and Quintana. There you see the gap just uh, hovering, minute, minute and two, minute and one. Uh, he, he's setting that pace. He's doing enough to win this race, uh, despite all of the angst that he has faced and a great performance. And, of course, let's let's not forget, he has, of course, won a stage, that amazing stage uh, to Pierre Saint-Martin, first stage of the Pyrenees, where, essentially, he really set his stall out for yellow. Solid minute thereabouts between uh, Quintana and... Uh, uh, the yellow jersey of Chris Froome, and it looks like that's the way that may well stay. 36 seconds between Quintana and what looks like we're going to have a French winner today. Thibaut Pinot, three kilometres remaining, and it just eases ever so slightly right now. I don't think it's going to work for uh, Thibaut Pinot, unfortunately. Quintana is the one who's coming up, and this final three kilometres are a little bit easier in sections, but still at this point, it just hurts so much after the effort they're making on this uh, plus 13 kilometre climb. We can see Quintana there, he's just walking away at it, and uh, Thibaut Pinot, I think he's really starting to suffer. Uh, I am concerned for Pino with this distance from the finish. The advantage he got, he has got 35 seconds, I don't think it's enough. Well, it's now 36 seconds. It's uh, maybe the toils of this campaign are starting not only to take a toll on Quintana, uh, but Froome, of course, as well. And Froome is now cutting the gap. He's cutting the deficit 58 seconds now. And still, I'm, bound, I'm starting to believe that Pino may well just get this. 35 seconds, Quintana, 2.7 kilometers to go. And this is where the where it eases ever so slightly to about 5.5%. He comes up to Ryder Ejidal, the first of his targets up this mountain, essentially. The real target, of course, sits behind him, wearing the yellow jersey, and still a gap between them. A minute, minute and two. It's hovering, Sean, but it's staying. It's not getting beyond that at the moment, at least. No, it's uh, hovering for a little moment now, and uh, you know, around the minute, a minute and two. But uh, again, we can see Quintana maybe starting to pay for his efforts he's the one who was riding and on the climb of course drafting is not as anything like on the flatter sections but still it's important that you have a teammate or two mates which Chris, Chris Froome had for a long time he still have Richie Port there Nero Quintana has been on his own for quite a while now, but he had also a teammate in the winner and corner. Motorcycle almost taking out uh, um, the main challenger for the yellow jersey. He'll be struck out for tomorrow on the Champs-Élysées. Striking up as well, up the road here is Quintana. His mission now is to get to Pinot. He's bridged over to Ejidal, and Ejidal fights back on the flatter section here. Brave effort by the big rangy Canadian, and uh, the little guy from Colombia goes for it yet again. Again, he wears the young riders leaders jersey. This man, Thibaut Pinot, I still think he can do this. He believes as well, I'm sure. He's got to. He's got no choice. 28 seconds with 2.3 to go. It's going to be close, Sean. Yes, it is going to be close. And uh, it seems that Thibaut Pinot has got energy from somewhere. He's really working out, giving it everything. And, of course, a stage on Alpe a Frenchman to win a stage on Alpe what a performance would be. And Thibaut Pinot, of course, he's had a real difficult race. But of latter days, he's been very aggressive in the break a lot. And getting close to winning a stage, if he wins this one, well, it will make the race for himself and the Francais de Joux team. Just looking at the clock from Quintana, measured up to Pino. Uh, Pino is just striding out again. It's back up to 26 seconds. It was 24 a few moments ago. What reserves has he got? Uh, Quintana starts to close once more. And look at the gap between the yellow jersey and Quintana. I think Sky possibly realising that this is job done for them. They came in today with 2 minutes and 38 seconds. They've got to be careful, though. Two kilometres still remaining. And, of course, bonus seconds at the line for Quintana. Yes, and... Uh taking the bonus six seconds into count still with this you know this advantage that Quintana has pulled out over Chris Froome looking like it's not going to happen and as we mentioned this morning at the start uh, you know the advantage that he had to make up 238 was it was always going to be a huge ask a huge ask but he's asked the question of himself and he's tried to deliver an answer but is it going to be enough as he goes under the two kilometers to go banner and he sits back in the saddle and look uh, Pino pulls out an advantage 27 seconds now it looks like Pino is going to give the French a victory that maybe just will calm some of the angst that they seem to be feeling uh, particularly towards Chris Froome on occasion here is Chris Froome though largely there has been applause and support from the main body of the fans here and we can be grateful for that 1.7 kilometers to go and it looks like we are now about to crown Chris Froome we'll wait till he gets to the line and Quintana I think knows it he looks back down the mountain he looks up ahead and what does he see ahead of him he sees Pino and behind him is Froome 
Quintana, it is not going to be, I'm afraid, not a stage win either. 27 seconds with 1,500 metres to go. Uh, and now it's where Pino starts to believe and starts to push on. And I'm afraid Quintana wakes up to the fact that he's not going to get a stage win today, I don't think. He's certainly not going to win this Tour de France, Sean. No, it doesn't look like he's going to make the advantage. And uh, he's probably made aware, you know, the differences. And again, he's expecting to, you know, close up on the ones that are out in front. I'm sure he realises that uh, Thibaut Pinot is out there because there was a lot of riders in between, so it's difficult. Uh, but, uh, you know, from his director sport, he, he's surely getting the information and we can see here he's just going to battle all the way to the line. And what a ride by Thibaut Pinot because I was looking at, you know, the, the times that... Uh, our chaser here, Nero Quintana, it looked like he was going to swallow him up in the final number of kilometres, but he just you know, got energy from somewhere and looks like he's going to hold on. Well, it's down to 22 seconds. He is fading, and Quintana is now engaging in a sprint. 1,100 metres. There's the Flamme Rouge. Now, Quintana's got no uh, sympathy for the French public as far as this matter is concerned. If he can catch uh, Pinot in the last K, he certainly will because he wants uh, that 10-second bonus out of the line. I don't think he's going to do it because the crowd and everyone is willing this man on, and he has got the will to succeed. When his head's in the right place, Thibaut Pinot can conquer, and today it looks like he's going to conquer the out. This is the only man who can stop him. Quintana here coming under the Flamme Rouge with a 21 second margin to the Frenchman. I think it's enough for him. Yes, it is enough. I think uh, at this point it does ease off a bit and goes down. Uh, when you get inside the final kilometre it starts to go down and then it kicks up the last 400 metres once again with a 21 second advantage. The way Thibaut Pinot is riding in the last number of kilometres it looked like he's going to make it. Richie Port, the ultimate uh, lieutenant it seems, has delivered Chris Froome to victory here he's been part of it there of course is Pierre Roland can't quite keep up with these guys right now minute and 46 back minute and 46 and uh, so not 20 seconds off that you can see what the gap is it's nowhere near two minutes and 38 I'm afraid and so Chris Froome is going to be crowned uh, Tour de France champion but for the French the headlines tomorrow are all going to be about Thibaut Pinot. They're absolutely loving this. The hoardings are being beaten. It's a drum beat that echoes down the mountain. Everybody else knows that somebody else has won the day. It's a Frenchman. Francis de Jure have taken the day on Alpe d'Huez. And the man that's done it for them is Thibaut Pinot. He's been crestfallen. He's picked himself back up. He's been wounded. He's picked himself back up. He got to the foot of this Alpe d'Huez. And he picked up the mountain. And he grew rounded to dust. Fantastic performance by him. Absolutely superb victory. We cast our minds back. Here he is. Brave effort by Quintana. The emotions rising above, above for everybody here. What a great performance it's been by him, Sean. A credit to him in every single way. What a battle. What a battle for the stage victory and what a battle to try and win this too. We see Nero Quintano coming in there just uh, over 20 seconds behind the French stage winner Thibaut Pinot who put up you know, a number lever right he pulled something out of the bag with you know, the final 2-3 kilometres and just held on and we can see Chris Froome is just working on it uh, to limit the losses and that's what it's going to be now as we see Heijdel also you know, a great performance to hold on out ahead of the big battle coming up from behind of the big candidates for this Tour de France Fantastic performance as we regather ourselves for Ryder Ejidal as well. Well, Chris Froome has had to gather himself and bite his tongue on so many occasions. And he took big bites in the Pyrenees out of all around him. And he's now taken this Tour de France title. He'll come to the line. He is our champion, a worthy champion as well, I'll be bound. For the second time, Chris Froome has been crowned Tour de France winner. And that, to him, will sound very good indeed. Far better than the sound of uh, the naysayers along the way. He shut up an awful lot of people out there, and he has delivered not only the yellow jersey. He is our king of the mountains. A king today, I guess, crowned was Pino, but to my mind, Chris Froome is the hero. What an amazing performance by him, by his team, and by everybody associated with him. Chapeau. Sean a worthy winner.
Yes, well, uh, he had to walk for it on the alterways and the teammates, I think, were of vital importance. This man coming in here, Richie Port, doing an excellent job, riding for so long up this uh, very, very difficult line, the alterways. But Chris Froome, you know, limiting the losses in the end when he had to do it. I see about 120 down there on Nero Quintana, plus the bonus which Quintana got. So he's going to lose about, what, 120, 130. So Quintana is going to be around the minute mark down, about a minute and ten, uh, by our uh, uh, handwritten reckoning. Well, apologies if the emotions rose to the fore. What a gutsy effort by little Nero Quintana. I spent a lot of time with him over the seasons, and in fact, he's the most uh, quietly spoken, and uh, he's the sort of guy you just walk past uh, uh, without noticing, quite frankly. But what a fantastic performance by Quintana to try one last time to deny Chris Froome spectacular battles we've had and all credit to Team Sky around Chris Froome as well well Powell's just coming across the line right now and uh, the Yates as well they've been a joy to watch for Orica Green Edge a team that of course had so many holes knocked in uh, their personnel right at the very beginning of this tour this is Nibali coming in within this group and Roman Bardet as well and uh, great credit to them as well and uh, Lotto Yumbo, the sort of quiet team really Jessing and Kelderman, they've had their times here likewise it's the ultimate challenge, the Tour de France and sometimes it's too big an ask for some very, very big names Nibali crosses the line Contador 2 and Bardet